Well, I guess the best way to sum up this last one is everything else. Um, you know, this is the stuff we kind of just all breeze through and just knock out. Um, again, there's a lot of thought process that needs to go into how you shoot, even um, supplementary rooms like, you know, third or fourth bedrooms, downstairs, rumpus rooms and all that. And we get into that here. There's really not a whole lot of technique as much as just um, knowing how to set up. And again, that just comes through experience. Um, you know, on, on the topic of experience, I think one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is how important experience is. Um, you are not going to be the best photographer in your city in six months. Um, you may get busy, you may be doing a lot of work, but you know, it, it really takes years to, to learn all the subtle um, lessons that real estate photography has out there for you to learn. And I, I think you have to not only spend the time to learn them, but you have to be receptive to learning them too. So you have to, you have to go in and, and um, think. Yeah, you have to think, you have to look, you have to use your eyes. We're photographers, use your eyes, look around, think about things, be logical. Um, you know, I love it when I'm working with like, say an interior designer or something, and they, they tell me what they're thinking and what their thought process is and what they think the focus of the room is. One of the greatest experiences I ever had, I was shooting uh, the montage up at Deer Valley and we had the montage marketing director from back east come out and she and I were putting the rooms together. And I, I mean, it was fantastic. We had three or four people from housekeeping and they were, you know, pinning all the sheets and everything so that they were perfect. We had two engineers, so anytime we had a light out, you know, boom, it was fixed. Everything was just perfect. I learned so much from that marketing director because she had reasons for everything. She had ways to double over towels so that they looked more voluminous and there were more of them. Um, you know, the, the pinning of the, the sheets to make them tight, you know, there's all these, different tricks that you only learn when you go through that experience. There's, there's no way anyone um, could make a video long enough or complete enough to cover all those different lessons. So it, it really does take a while to, um, to get to the point where you can charge for your experience. And that's really what it is. You have to go in and you, you, you have to make things look good. I don't know what else to say on that. Anyway, so here we're, we're going to go through the rest of this house. And, um, you know, there's, there's no making a vacant 60-year-old house look good. But there are ways to clean it up and making, make it look as best as it can. And that's what we're going to do here. So let's dive right in. Okay, let's talk bathrooms. I think everybody knows. Seat down, but... Did you also know these are ugly? Just take them out. Um, shot this room too. Um, really flat, really ugly. But you know what? It 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 is the master. Um, and I think the the final flash image with the flash right here really made it work. See how the top of the bed is lit and the side is dark? That accentuated that, and I think that made a giant difference in, you know, we're not gonna make that look like the Taj Mahal, but we sure as heck can make it look a little bit more visually exciting just with simple tools that we use every day. So that's what I tried to do in there. Okay, we were shooting 1 8th in the rooms. In a room this small, we're gonna need 1 16th or 1 32nd. Um, so I'm going to reset for that. I am gonna go ahead and put D. I'd normally use B, but um, do I have to repeat what I did to B? So I'm just gonna put D in here. 
I can't put it there. I guess it's going to go there. All right. All right, that's where I'm going. And I was about to shoot this, but I noticed something. I was at F4. Why was I at F4? Well, earlier in one of the other videos, I was talking about a shot I saw while I was talking that I wanted to get, and it was this right here. I just thought that that was really cool. But to make that really work, I had to shoot it at F1.8. So I brought out my trusty 85 millimeter and shot it. And it was beautiful, but that means when I put in a lens that stops down to only f4, that it goes to f4. So I need to bring that back up to, whoops, wrong button, to 8. And my point here is, and what I, why I really wanted to point this out, is no matter how dark an image is, we can turn this little wheel here and bring it up to the exposure that we want. Um, and it'll look way brighter than it does in real life in the viewfinder. Um, that's the magic of shutter speed and setting your exposure and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, you don't need to turn on lights to get a good exposure. You need good light to get a good exposure. And if you've got even light, and then you turn on a light, it fucks it all up. Um, not just with this ugly top-down light, which is hideous, but with color, which totally screws up the scene. As long as we've got a single light source and a single color of light, we've got good light. And that I would much rather see than adding light to a scene because you think it's too dark and just fucking it all up. So don't worry about turning on lights unless they're really crucial to the shot. Here we go with a scene with no lights in it and we're getting a, just a perfect exposure. It's a long one, but it's a perfect one. So yeah, lights off gang generally. And then let's go ahead and do our we'll expose for that window, which gets us down just enough. And let's see, I think I said we were going to go to uh, 16th on these. Yeah, let's go to 32 because we've got two of them in there. Light is additive that way. Of course, you knew that, right? All right, let's see. Um, not too bad. Not too bad. I would like to do one more. With the D, -d, -d, -d right here at the cutoff. Right at the cutoff. Yeah, there we go. What do you think? What do you think? Is that going to be good? Okay, this is kind of my standard. This is what the bathroom looks like shot. Oh, see, I like the light there like the light there a lot. Um, and then I can get rid of the reflection of the light with that shot. Perfect. All right, so this is our standard. This is the only bathroom on the floor, which means it's gotta have at least two shots to it. In my opinion, you can't just let this one shot and go away. Um, so I look at that. This is pretty well represented in that image. I don't need to do anything there. I never, ever, ever, ever want to shoot a toilet. So this will be my second shot. So I need to come over here and get something of that. And then hopefully I'll get that in it and that'll be a good second shot. When you're here and your subject's right there, this is when a 14 millimeter comes in handy. And that is my shot. So I will turn you off, go back to three brackets, and four seconds. And let's take a look at those. Not too bad. Bring the exposure down, and we'll do our flash one. This is really hard to do one-handed. I think that 
it works. You know what I'm going to do? I see me reflected there. I'm going to do one more with me out of the shot. I do want you to note, though, how do I avoid reflections on the key part of the image? I am lazy. I open the goddamn door. That's all it takes. Open the damn door and you cause yourself a whole lot less hearty. So, hey, look, it's me. I really am here. All right, so I'll squeeze out over here. Press the button. Get out of the shot. There we go. I bet you it's good. And it is. Sweet. All right. Shooting the bedroom, and what do you notice? That giant discoloration. What is it? Well, I can tell right off it's that window. But that window looks green, not yellow. I wonder what it is. Well, you have to get over into that light and look through the window. Holy moly. It must be all the orange from that brick. So needless to say, to neutralize this color behind me, I used a flash in this room. I probably wouldn't have, it being a second bedroom and all normally, but um, the discoloration um, made me say, yeah, flash it so that I can get, I can neutralize that color. For what it's worth, the reverse. No color problems at all. It's just fine. All right, now let's look at a, a room like this. Big, spacious, as, you know, sort of boring. There's nothing flashy or exciting about it. It's family room. Well, there is this. I do want to point this out. If the home you're shooting has one of these, it is an unwritten rule that you have to turn it on. You have to shoot. You have to play. Come on. Oh, this is so hard one-handed. Damn. Come on. I am not. Ooh, I made that one. Yeah. We're going to shoot that shot. Um, again, very boring, very flat, very pastel room. So, um, you know, I'd still shoot my three little outlying ambience, which I did. And get those. And then this is the only reason I'm putting this in here is for the flash. Just take it. Put it away from the camera and light enough to just fill all that and then take your shot. I think I want it. It's at four. I think I'm going to take it to two. And you know what? There you go. That's all you need. This is how I would handle just about any bedroom, all your bathrooms, unless, you know, they're major or there's something, but your secondary bedrooms and bathrooms... This is, this is how you do them. Three shots, quick flash, put it all together, and then move on. Here's another concept I came up with when I came into this room. Again, a basic square flat room. And I shot one shot from here, just to kind of show the layout of the film, or the room. And then, well, guess where I shot the second one from? Here. Um, I think it's it's very important um, to not not shoot the same shot. I could have shot that shot there, and then come here and shot this. That's the same fucking shot. I mean, what have you told me that's new? Nothing. If you're going to shoot more than one shot of a room, show me something wildly different. Give me new information. It's all about information. You are the passer of information from the homeowner to the potential buyer. So do shots that show completely new and different things. Expose new facts about the subject. Make each image new, unique, and different than the one before it. And tell a story. Walk me through the house. Don't just throw me a bunch of random images. Let me see what I would see walking through the house. Here's something else really, really stupid, but it needs to be said. You shoot a room like this, you know, you can tell you're going to get a good exposure. A fifth of a second, a half a second, something like that. But what about in there? Oh my gosh. 
Well, even the iPhone adjusts the exposure so you can see in here. And would you normally shoot this? Maybe, maybe not. This is something I'd be talking to the homeowner about or the realtor, but this right here makes it a yes. Washer and dryer, I always shoot a uh, washer and dryer room. And I'm going to close that, do that, clean it up a little bit. Um, yeah, washer and dryer always shoot, always, always, always. These, I'm going to shoot. Um, what I tend to do is ask the realtor or the homeowner if there's anything new or been put in in the last year or two. Um, another thing you can tell them too is just because I shoot it, you don't have to show it, but you know, what if somebody from Baltimore is asking about this house, what's the heater look like? Well, there's the picture. You didn't put it in the MLS, but you can send it to that guy and they can see it and know exactly what they're getting into. So don't always shoot these, but when I do, it's for a guy in Baltimore. Something else I also knew coming in that we had, or have, uh, door to the outside right here. Um, so, I shot this room knowing that I had this placeholder here that people, that's unique, people would recognize. So I had planned to shoot a shot that showed how to get outside, but also use this placeholder so that people would know where it was. You know, um, you know, you don't want people lost walking through your house. Let them know what it is. Um, I don't know if that shot's going to be usable or say what I want. So I'm also going to get this shot that shows the outside. Um, also, there was no lock on that stupid piston. So... Here's something we all have to do at some point. Use our wallets and I believe a lens cap to hold that door open. Oh, you've got Harry Potter's little house under the stairs here. Do you shoot that? That one? No. If there's something in there, something cool, something new, something different, yeah. That? Nope. We move on. Boom, what's wrong with it? Absolutely nothing, except that light's on. That ruins it. Watch this room there. Now we see the natural light and it's beautiful. Shooting it at almost 20 millimeters. That's the long exposure there. Um, gonna flash it. I really like those streaks of light coming in, but we're gonna Good flash. Sneak by the tripod. Put our light right there. I'm sorry, right there. You knew that though, because you watched part one. So let's bring this down to, there we go. Turn that off and First, let's just get a window pole. We can get a wind pole with that light there. That's no big deal. Now let's see what happens when it flashes. Yeah, see how that's gonna match just perfect with the natural lighting in there? Bingo, we're done. All right, I'm shooting a reverse. What do you see that's the problem? I see it, major problem. That orange, orange sucks. This is why we join the no lights on gang turn that off turn that off we've got white walls out here too so they reflect everything now we come back here notice he's still there and look at that yeah much better let's go ahead and knock that bad boy out we do have that bright line oh shit sorry um, we do have that bright line right there that um, let's underexpose that a little bit. All right, let's shoot that again without a flash. We do have that bright line from the window. Um, nothing we can do about that. 
other than underexposed till it's not in the picture. Okay, so this is where you, this is the trick for eliminating discolored light. You underexpose till you no longer see the light and then you only use flash. That way you've got, again, a single light source. Jeez, did I do a three banger again? Um, let's see, there we go. That's a little overexposed, but there you go. Do you see that? We mix that in and we won't, will not have that mist color. And that's because we took the exposure so far down that there's no other light in the picture other than that flash. That's how you solve the problem. What's wrong here? This has to go. This has to go. And I'm gonna take that out too because I can. And there's no real reason for it to be in there. So I don't like that much either. I think these are both gonna. Take all this out. Yeah. Here we'll straighten that. Try and get those as straight as we can. Um, I think we'll put it right there. Thank you very much. And then let's twist this over. Oh, set an exposure that looks good. Tilt down. That's this knobby. And um, let's double check our focus. We are right where we want to be. That looks really good. Let's do three. I don't think I need a flash there. I think that's going to be a final picture. I don't think there's a need for one. But... You know what? It never hurts to shoot one. So let's get Mr. Flash. Is it C? Yep. D's upstairs. I'm only using one on the downstairs. Where's it going to go? Oh, oh boy. Right there, of course. And let's bring our light down a little bit. And we're going to need an exposure way down into the 32s ish. All right, what's that look like? Um, looks a little bright on the iPhone, but in person it looks pretty good. Let me see if I can, nope, I can't. Oh wait, I can do it here. There, see, that looks pretty good. Bingo. And now, the party room. Last room, last shot. Gonna be two shots, one from here, and then, I want to show this, I want to show this, I want to show this. really don't want to show that, but um, I think if this is easy to move, we're going to just pull it over here so that I can put a camera over there and get the shot I want. And I want this because, like I said earlier, show me new information. Show me new things about this place. Show me how to get in and out. Show me the built-ins. Show me something new. Show me something unusual, something different, something I didn't see in the last house. And none of that is visible from this shot. So, one shot. And two shots. And because of the light line, we'll use a flash. So, there we go. All right, so I just shot our flash shot from over there and got that, got my three exposures. Um, I am going to leave that there. The last bit of any sort of advice or lesson from this shoot is from Wayne Capilli and what he calls light firming. And that is, if you think ahead enough about all your shots, you can put lights in positions that you can use for multiple shots and not have to move them. Again, that saves you time. Um, you know, earlier we talked about not doing, doing the amount of work that you're paid to do. Well, I think another important, um, thing to think about 
is to not work too hard. If there's two shots and one is shooting right into a window and you're going to have to do all kinds of window pulls and nasty things like that, and it's a lot of work and you really don't benefit that much from it, um, you know, you're working too hard. Um, you know, the, the, the way you should do your, do the easiest, quickest, fastest shots you can. Um, and that's something I've learned from the HDR photographers, you know, they just in and out as quickly as they can. If you're doing something that's going to benefit the shot, do it. Um, but if, if you're just, if, if you're just looking at a hard shot, that's a hard shot to do, you know, it's okay to be a little lazy and, um, you know, to, um, to do it in a quicker way as long as you're getting a quality product. I guess that's what I mean to say. Okay, last light. I'll put it right here just to fill in this area for the background of this shot. See, that's one of those things. I'm making more work for myself here, but I think it benefits the shot because, well, actually, let's do one more where I bring that light down some because that's too bright there. And that's not enough light there. Let's try that. We're at 1 8th now. Yeah, that's a little bit too much. There, 1 16th. Okay, I think that works. That looks good to my eye. Um, but see, for the other ones, we've got this giant black hole. And to me, that's a big enough black hole that uh, I think it was worth the extra work or will be worth the extra work to cut that in. If that were just a small little thing, I could probably take the high exposure of the ambience, there's our three ambience, and just crank that up and use that for a small hole. But I think that was big enough that it was worth lighting. All right, well, that is it. I'm going to bid you adieu from this home with this wonderful bed and this wonderful bathroom, all this wonderful toilet paper, and Mr. C. So I hope you got something out of this, and now I guess we're going to go look at editing.